back to the channel. Um, it's a bit of a wet one today. So we are in the workshop working on what we have in front of me. Uh, most of you might recognize this type of bonnet. It is a 79 series bonnet. Um, and we are looking to get this fabricated onto the 80 series. Well, that is the plan, of course. So um, these are like hen's teeth. Um, here in the UK, um, 79, because we don't have 79 series in the UK, they don't come out from the factory here. So, trying to get hold of a 79 series bonnet is uh, very, very difficult. It is a, it's like a unicorn. Um, so, I was very lucky enough to get this bonnet off a guy up in Scotland. You've really helped me out, so I really appreciate it. So, this is going to eventually find its way onto the 80 series. That's going to be part of the build. So, Part of this, the, the body work of the 80 series is applying the, the new style bonnet and going through the rest of the body and doing all the body work in one hit. Um, that's the plan of course, but what we like to do is try and get this on because there's quite a lot of um, body work, body filler and fabrication onto the existing bonnet. We've got to do that. So um, the plan is to physically cut the skin off of this, um, the frame of this bonnet and apply it to the frame on to the 80 series and I would like it's going to be a functional scoop um, so I don't want it's it's not going to be a fake scoop it will be functional where it delivers air in, over across the top of the engine um, unfortunately we are not going to have an intercooler on the top uh, a top mounted intercooler I have heard there's um, the front mount intercoolers are much more efficient yeah they don't suffer from heat soak like the top mount intercooler so we're going to leave that open for the engine and then eventually over time we'll we'll go to a front mounted intercooler um, which will be much better and this will really give the 80 series a nice unique look that's kind of what i'm aiming for so um, we have taken a few measurements from the 80 series um, I'll, I'll walk you through what we've done so if you are looking to do this in the future then this may help you so this is the old style 79 series bonnet. The, the newer style, I think it's the 2017 model and up. The scoops are much more profound. Um, they are, they stand up a lot and they really look smart. Um, however, these are a little bit more subtle, a bit more streamlined, um, but these will, these will work. So what we're working off is the sort of fold lines um, on the bonnet. So you've got obviously the scoop fold line, this fold here. You've got that rear fold line there, and you've got a couple of folds right at the back here. So we're using these fold lines as a guide. So the, the furthest most fold lines, we're going to work off that on the perimeters. And then where it, the bonnet flows down here, we'll just draw a line across there and then work towards the back. So all we want is that, that skin there, um, and then we'll separate that from the lower frame. And then when we come around to the 80 series bonnet, it's basically the same. So on the 80 series bonnet, uh, I've just removed the cargo net for the first time in since I've owned the vehicle. And you can see a lot of 80 series suffer from losing their, their, their clear coat. Um, so it's probably a good thing that we're doing this. Um, so you, you'll see the, these ridge lines over here from factory. So we're using them again as a guide. So we've got those measurements. Now the 79 series bonnet is slightly wider. So it will come out a bit further, which is not a bad thing. So it just means that once we fabricate the 79 series bonnet on here, we've got a little bit, obviously we will tack weld the bonnet in place and then we'll do a lot of body filler just to make sure it's all nice and factory and make the whole bonnet flow into all the levels there. So that's the plan. So what we're gonna do on the 79 series is we're gonna mark the cut lines uh, with some tape just to give us those, those edges across the bonnet um, so we're going to put our marking tape all where we're going to be cutting and once we've established that just double check all the measurements again and then take these measurements from the cut lines and transpose them onto the 80 series bonnet and see where those lines come up so at least we know exactly where that bonnet's going to go um, and then when we cut that skin off we can match the, the two lines check everything, especially this front section here, a, it's gonna require a little bit of fettling, a little bit of work, because um, this is a much more, it's got a larger radius than the 79 series bonnet, which is a lot more sort of aggressive. 
sort of uh, fold in it now. So that will require a little bit more body work. So, um, so we'll have a look at that. So for now, let's get the skin off the 79 series bonnet. We need to separate that, get that little marked up, and then we'll mark it across there and, and we'll see you guys then. Okay, so what we've done now, we've take the, the cut lines, where we're we gonna cut the bonnet, the top skin. What we've also done is we've measured the 80 series width, bonnet width, and we've got the center of that 80 series bonnet, and we've done exactly the same with the 79 series bonnet. We've got the center going down the bonnet. So once we've cut this top skin, cut that out, we can basically take this top skin, match it onto the 80 series bonnet, and then we have an identical line, this back line here and that front line should marry up with the 80 series bonnet, and that'll give us the center of this bonnet, so everything is nicely aligned. So that is a good starting point for us to get this matching to the 80 series, and then if we can at least see where our contact points are for the 79 series bonnet onto the 80 series, so we know exactly once we've got the center, we'll put that down, and then we can see the lines that we need to make and uh, open up for ready for welding on the 80 series bonnet. Um, because ideally what we would like to do is cut open the 80 series bonnet in sort of this area here, and to allow the air to go through the bonnet. So I don't want to destroy the 80 series bonnet by cutting loads of material out. I only want to cut enough to allow airflow in there. So it, the scoop is functional in that way. So we only, in theory, need to cut out a very small section of the 80 series bond just below this scoop here and just about to about there, back there, just open it all up. So and it doesn't really affect the rigidity of the, the existing bonnet. So that is the idea. So we'll show you the 80 series in bonnet internals um, and we'll kind of come up with an idea of where we're gonna cut and what we're gonna do. So um, let's get cracking. bunch of cutting we've done a whole bunch of jigsawing we've mm. test fitted the, the white bonnet like three or four times what have we decided to do right now so we figured out that it's not gonna work what we wanted to do we don't we were thinking of playing it safe and folding it in with the scoop so we could basically just lay it on but it's not gonna work so we've had done some research and the best thing is just the car bag holding it okay so what what be, why isn't it working without that fold? What, what's causing the problems? Um, it's more of the the body just like holding it out, I think. So the different shapes. So yeah. it's, it's this back one here. So we've got to reinforce the back skin because we've got it. We we're dealing with a bit of a bulge on the 79 series bonnet. So that that's why we've got the frame there. But on the front here, I think it was that when that skin comes down here. Yeah. It's that where the scoop meets the skin. It doesn't work. It, 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 yeah, it just doesn't work. The fold and everything. Yeah, the fold doesn't work. It's not the the scoop is not sitting correctly, and it's just not working. So, um, yeah, uh, back to the drawing board kind of thing. We're going to cut a big hole in the existing bonnet, get rid of all the skin, leave the the frame in place, and then we're going to test fit the seventy nine series bonnet back on there, and then get the the frame in and underneath the existing frame and we can reinforce the 79 series skin so it is like a factory bonnet once yeah. again so yeah so it's a little bit of a fettling of steel and back and forth but we're slowly getting there that's okay we made progress we've understood we've learned new things we've never done this before no exactly yeah it's just a learning curve yeah so we literally dove straight into the deep end this morning got it off cuts um, so yeah, all good, eh? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
Ja, dann kommt Pinze. Okay, so uh, from the looks of it, we pretty much committed. Um, yeah. Open up the bonnets. It's given us um, as much breathing room as possible. We've sort of dry fitted the 79 bonnet on there. Got that into a really good position. So the scoop, this is what the trouble we were having last time is that these little edges of the scoop was just kicking up too much. So now that we have this bonnet, all that space cut open now, this actually lays into the bonnet, which is quite nice. So what we'll do is get the skin tacked on to the bonnet, get that done, and then we're gonna flip it over, work from below, and then we're just gonna add some support and rigidity here, um, because it's a little bit floppy around there. So it just gives it nice structural rigidity inside here, keeps that up. And then we're gonna work on doing the front, making sure that's supported enough from the side. So we've got the back frame we can tack in. That'll go in like that, obviously from below. Um, and then we've got the other plate, which just supports the front of the, the scoop. Um, and that'll go inside that one there. So that'll go kind of like that inside. So you'll see it when you open the bonnet, you'll see it on that side there. Um, and that's if you want to add, you want to fit your top mount into Cuda Scoop. So we'll put that in position. And then it gives you that ability to mount that if you need to. Um, but we'll, we'll figure something out. So we're not going to be obviously going top mount in a cooler. It's going to be a front mount in a cooler obviously in the future. But yeah, let's get this done. <laughs> get this thing tacked on and uh, uh, yeah, let's get, we're balls deep now, man. <laughs> surface along with Alfie he's done a great job of prepping the, the lower bonnet I've prepped the upper skin now I'm just tacking everything nice and carefully in position so we've centered the top skin onto the lower one and now it's literally going around and just getting all these little raises out so we just tack move along tack just make keep all the steel down as close to the original body as we can then we're going to go around with the, the body hammer as we're tacking, we're going to roll the, the metal into the bodywork of the lower the bumper here. So it, it gives us less work to do when it comes to doing any sort of filling work. Um, so I want to try and do a little bit of a few stitch welds around the, the top skin, just keep that all locked in place. Um, it would be amazing to fully weld it all and dry it all back, but uh, I think that may be a bit too much heat. Um, I don't want to put in too much heat into obviously the both, the, both skins. Um, so for now, we're just going to tack as we go, tack, 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 all the way around and just roll that metal as close as we can into the original bodywork and then we'll take it from there. Alrighty, a little bit of an update, the scoop's on, uh, went on pretty good, tack welded all the way around. Uh, probably every 20 mil per tax round as you see in time lapse um, I tacked as much area as I could it just kept the skin down kept all the lines nice and straight and that's the best way to do um, especially with this this thin sheet steel um, it's the best way to do it so just keep it nice and flat keeps it nice and uniform all the way around and I basically just joined the tacks all the way around so it took me quite a while to weld everything but it came out really good added loads of strength and rigidity um, to the overall bonnet strength which is great um, the physical scoop is in has come up really well so that's bolted to the factory mounts 
um, from the 79 series bonnet actually bolted that through so it doesn't move um, and you, what we had originally was a couple of flex points over there and there basically this lifted up so adding that bracket in there is brought it down, it brought it down and made it all streamlined which is really good so um, I can fit the the factory scoop if we would like if I wanted to I'll just add the the rear frame to the internal part here so I can slide that in tack weld that and that, that can basically bolt in if I wanted to but at the moment I don't really see a point in doing that um, I'm getting exactly what the bottom is designed to do is that directional airflow straight over the top of the motor um, that's exactly what I want it's just to engulf the motor with loads of fresh air both from the front grille and through the top of the motor um, this obviously is just designed for a, a top mount intercooler which we're not going to have so we don't really want to uh, worry about it that is mainly for that airflow making it super efficient and directing it into a certain area so we don't want to do that we just want to make sure the whole motor is uh, engulfed in nice fresh air so that has turned out really good i'm pretty pleased with that so i'm actually going to uh, move on to doing the body filler now so i've got a u-pole smooth body filler this is a big can um, i've got a lot of body filling to do um, around the trucks of various areas so i just thought give myself a big tin and that'll do the job uh, it is pretty decent um, it's very simple to apply. Um, you get obviously your applicator, you get your hardener or your catalyst, and obviously with your the amount of filler in there. So the your tool is really handy. That'll help you with nice straight lines you want to get. And then it takes about 20 minutes to dry out, depending on the thickness of the material. And then from there you can just sand everything down, make sure it's all nice and uniform all the way around, it follows those body lines, and that's exactly what we're gonna try and do now. So we're gonna get the fillering in done, and then we're gonna come back and do a whole bunch of sanding. So elbow grease um, to the max. so far uh, it's all primed up now ready for sort of final stages of paint uh, what it's done now after the body filler it's given us uh, a good sort of visual perspective of what areas we need to pay particular attention to all the humps and bumps in certain areas um, so a top tip for you when you use body filler is less is more so try and use as little body filler as you can and build it up in stages it is much faster um, for sanding and much easier on the elbow grease but overall it's it's super super cool that I've got it on and I'm really proud that I've actually done it uh, we knocked this out in a weekend um, we didn't have to use the first internal frame in the bulge there was no need for it because it's really structurally strong when we fully welded everything in so it's, it's actually turned out very very good um, we have used the, the backing plates for the actual scoop itself. That has kept everything locked in and given this a lot of support and rigidity, which is really good. So I'll, sh I'll pop the bonnet and show you that. So from a perspective now, she's gray. She's ready for the final stages of paint, which we'll get to when we start doing the rest of the body work. So she's going to stay like this for a little while. Um, so let's show you the internals so you guys can understand what we've done. So there's the backing plate there. 
for the scoop. Now that basically just holds the scoop in position. Um, you'll find that if the scoop kind of lifts in the, in the two corners, this is what holds it all down. It keeps everything nice and straight and all um, within those recesses of the, on the, the top skin. So you can see there's no framework in the top there. There's no need for it, but I do have it at home if I do want to, uh, if I need to add that, uh, which is not a problem. That basically slots in behind the existing frame and you can just tack weld that in. Um, and then you've also got the, the expansion of if you need to use the top mount intercooler sort of um, air system, you can use that as well, uh, which is not really no need for this right now. So um, very, very happy with this. Um, it was relatively easy to do. We knocked it out in the weekend. Um, I think we overthought it in the beginning a little bit and try to make things a bit more complex than what it really needed to be. Um, but overall, uh, we committed, cut a nice big hole, went for it. And that's probably the top tip I can do uh, say to you is try and make as much space for this scoop as you can um, because there's going to be a lot of framework in the way so cut out as much top skin as, as you can leave the bottom framework in position then drop it down and just see where your clash points are and then start from there but you can refer to the video we'll show you lots of information in there um, and hopefully this really helps you so if you have any questions any comments as usual please leave them down below and I appreciate everybody's support for the channel and the build and everything and of course we will definitely see you in the next one if i'm not back in five minutes just wait longer